the students in this delegation are soldiers in the army of nonviolence. According to Dr. King, nonviolence is a declaration of war against evil and injustice. It's not passive, it's aggressive. It doesn't wound, it doesn't attack with weaponry other than love and concern for others. But it is aggressive. It stays up later, gets up earlier, runs faster, studies harder, and serves intently. We have to heal from the racial, racist politics and practices that this country, our country, has perpetrated against all of us. We have to heal. We have to diagnose it, and we have to tell the whole truth. We suffer from great inequities during this pandemic. Many of the billionaires have become much more rich in the last 12 months a pace that's startling rapid. We have to heal from the economic inequities that cause more homelessness and poverty and greater wealth for a time of people. Our nation's evolved in 32 wars right now. It's been kept a secret. We have to heal from being an aggressive nation. We have to tell the whole truth. So we have to continue working to better our lives, to better the lives of our brothers and sisters in this world. And that requires us to stay awake, to stay awake through periods of great social change, to stay awake because we know that the world that we have today can do better. We can create a more perfect union through works of social uplift, through helping our brothers and sisters within our communities here and abroad. Dr. King explains to us that as we are developing so fast in our technology and in our ability to communicate, we are leaving our moral and spirituality behind. And that's when things like the big triplets of racism, of consumerism, the notion that we prioritize our phones, our cars, our money, and our wealth over our neighbors, our brothers, and our sisters, our mothers that are struggling to put food on the table and pay rent at the same time, and the, and the war that exists. Dr. Wilson mentioned that there are 32 wars that we are currently involved in, and that's because our nation is struggling with a spiritual and moral lag. We are losing the love that exists in our hearts, and our minds are no longer focused on how my neighbor is struggling or what's happening down the street. We care too much about the way that we look rather than about what we are studying. The joy that used to exist in being together, the joy that used to exist in sharing bread and breaking food does not exist in our homes. We must understand and understand that it's about an intergenerational, interracial, multicultural effort to restore this joy, to restore this peace that once used to exist in our neighborhood and our street. We each live in two realms, an internal realm and an external realm. This internal realm is one filled with religion, with culture, with ties to one another, music and family. The external world is one of technology. It's one of the wealth. It's one of comparison, how many things I have and how many things you have. If we do not center this internal realm, then we head to spiritual doom. Because we need a revolution of values right now. In today's world, when we find ourselves in times of darkness, in struggle, what takes us forward and brings us out of that darkness is reprioritizing what we do every day. It's learning how to smile at our neighbors and talk to them. It's learning how to value one another's cultures. Prioritize learning about one another instead of buying something or staying inside, like my colleague Fatima said.
It's about the way that we treat one another and the way that we envision a community that accepts each of us for our religions, for our music, for our families. It's about seeing that better world and striving for it. And so every day when we wake up, we have that choice. We can do things that uplift our communities rather than divide them.